Uh, Jackie proved that charm and personality could overcome that. Rumble in the Bronx gave him the profile he needed, and it was now time for Jackie to decide whether to make one more attempt at becoming a star in America. This crossing was one that would challenge him the most. It was initiated by a young director, Brett Ratner. He knew of Jackie's reputation and felt he was the one to finally give his talent the respect it deserved. He had such a bad experience on those other movies. They didn't treat him like Jackie Chan, the star. I mean, he's God in Asia. And they didn't treat him well, and the movie didn't, didn't do well, so he had a very bad experience. He had a difficult time having a career in the United States, which is, like I said, what he always dreamed of having. Brett Ratner would be the man to give Jackie the chance to combine the best of what Hollywood could offer with his own unique skills. But Jackie had been so hurt by his previous failures in Hollywood that the film they were to make together, Rush Hour, almost never happened. I remember when we were first offered Rush Hour 1, he was very reluctant to, to accept it. You know. He said, oh, let's forget it, let's stay put in Hong Kong. You know, I'm happy where I am. And I remember, I remember it took a lot of efforts, my efforts and my assistant Solon's effort, you know, to convince him, come on, give it another try. Jackie eventually took the leap, but working in the huge Hollywood film factory was tough. Soon, all the old frustrations returned, and he took them out on the DP, the director of photography. I remember the rush hour one. It really makes me very, very mad. I'm very young in Hollywood, and the DP, he's ordered by the company helping a new director, Brett Ratner. Everything, same angle, same lighting. I get angry because you don't know. I know you, you're the best DP, but action scene, you know nothing. You are 80 years old. If you're talking about the action scene, I'm 120 years old. Really, but what can, how can you say, I just... Yes, okay. I stayed with him in America throughout the shooting, and, and I would be the one who had to time again pacify him. Look, come on, the Americans do this, they must be, you know, you gotta keep on telling him that, oh, okay, all right, I'll take it. You know, it's that kind of attitude, but, uh, uh, but it, it was hard for him, believe me. There were times when Jackie's frustration did get the better of him, and he took over. With his experience, he could work so fast, moving the camera to new positions, that he knew the American crew would never be able to keep up with him. One day, I remember, in the pool table scene. I shoot number one, number 20, number 80. What's between two, three, four, five, six? You don't know. Right? I said, boom, 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 boom. Now turn around. You go away. He don't know what's the camera angle anymore. He pick up the lens, he go away. I'm so happy. I want the proof. When the action scene coming, I better than you. He had begun to prove his point, and in director Brett Ratner, he had also found a willing collaborator and student. Directing Jackie is kind of like taking a math test with a calculator, because, you know, any struggle that I had, you know, trying to decide where I should put the camera or how I should start the scene, he has the answer. So having him there was not only just a great honor to be his director, but I was also like his student at the same time. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in the world living who has as much knowledge and experience about filmmaking as him.